Elvis Presley, who, of course, you idolized, I'm sure. Yep. Elvis Presley wanted to record that song, I Will Always Love You. He loved the song. And you told him no. It's so fascinating to me. This guy, Colonel Tom, who was Elvis's manager or whatever you want to call him, Colonel Tom says, uh, Dolly, but you got to give me the publishing. What a crazy move. So you told Colonel Tom no, right? How'd that all go down? Oh, well, I had, I was so excited that Elvis was going to record the song and Elvis's producer at the time, he had called and asked me to come down to the studio. He said, Elvis wants to meet you and he's going to record. I will always love you. And I was out of my mind with excitement, of course. I mean, just me thinking about Elvis singing my song. And it was the night before, the afternoon uh, before the session the next day that Colonel Tom had called and said, you know that we don't record anything with Elvis unless we have the publishing or at least half the publishing. And I said, well, that's not possible because that is my most important copyright. I got my own publishing company and that's, you know, I said, I can't do that. He said, well, at least you got to give us half. And I said, I can't do that. And <sighs> so I, he said, well, then we can't record it. Of course, I cried all night about that, but it was only after Whitney recorded, I was so thankful that I had made that choice because I made a lot of money off of Whitney's. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even believe this story I heard about with Whitney that, is it true you heard it on the radio for the first time? I did. I was coming home from my office uh, from downtown on Music Row to my home in Brentwood, and I was driving at the time. I had my Cadillac. It's just like a dog, you know, hearing a, a whistle. I, I was saying, what? You know, it's like it was ringing some sort of a bell, but it didn't, it didn't dawn on me. By the time I realized it, she was ready to go into the course. And then when she started that, I, I almost wrecked, I, honest to God, had to pull over to the side at a Walgreens, uh, you know, there in Brentwood or where the Walgreens is now, and to listen to the rest of it. And it was the most overwhelming sensation because I couldn't believe my little country sad song you know, could even be done like that, but to hear it like that. And it was just overwhelming. That was one of the greatest uh, experiences I've ever had in my entire life. And I... That's the Whitney Houston version, okay? And then, of course, when we hear your version. Unbelievably, one of the greatest love songs of all time. I know the backstory. That Porter Wagner guy, you were like working with him on television. Guy was a lovely guy. Gave you a break. You were a young woman. This guy did not want you to leave him. He wants you to stay on TV with him. And you said, no, I've got to leave. You tell him goodbye in a love song. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, there's a lot more to that story. Porter and I were, you know, we were like oil and water. We loved each other. It was like one of those love-hate relationships. But I was stubborn. He was stubborn. But I had come to Nashville, you know, to be a to be my own star. You know, I really felt like I needed to move on. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life being a girl singer. I right. knew my destiny. I knew that I had to continue doing what I felt led and drawn to do. So the thing I can do best is to write. So I went home after I had finally made my decision that I'm going, no matter what, I'm going. And so I wrote the song, I Will Always Love You. And I take it back the next morning. I said, Porter, sit down. I want to, I've got something I need to sing to you. And so I sang the song. Alone Porter in his was, office. In his office, just me and my guitar. And he was just sitting behind his desk and tears started started rolling down. He said, that's the best song you ever wrote. And you can go if I can produce the song. So 